Assalamu alaikum fam. Hope you're doing well. We're we'll continue our reading of Sahih Muslim. Please buy these books. Please buy them. Don't trust Google with all your religious information. Uh, because the tech overlords do not like you. They do not like free thinkers. Okay. Or religious people in general. Alright, let's begin. Bismillah rahman rahim We are in the book of faith. It was narrated from Thabit bin ad dahak that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, No man is bound by a vow concerning something that he does not possess, and cursing a believer is like killing him. Oh, okay, that's important. And whoever kills himself with something in this world will be punished with it on the day of resurrection. And I, oh, I think I've also read correctly that you should not... Allah has appointed for you a, a term of your life. You have free choice, but you cannot decide when you exit. You have to endure with gracious patience your testing and trials. And you cannot escape it, and you should press head onward. Through suffering comes strength. Whoever makes a false claim in order to appear to have more than he has, Allah will only cause him to have less. Okay, so look at that. Okay, so this one makes me think of whoever makes a false claim in order to appear to have more than what he has. There's a saying, at least in America, fake it till you make it. I really don't like this type of strategy. This usually has to do with fashion. has to do with people stunting and, and acting like they have more wealth than what they do in order to attain business deals, to gain trust of customers, and to sometimes find a mate, you know? And this is this type of trickery, I'd, I'd say, that falls into this. So if you appear to have more than what you have, it shows like, hmm, there's something going on there. My uncle, who is well established in some regards, he dresses kind of like really poor. You know, sandals, like a Hawaiian shirt, khaki shorts, and a phony fisherman hat. You wouldn't know he has an estate. Um, I like that approach. You know, the simple approach of modesty, of minimalism. Uh, but there are some people who definitely flaunt and peacock when they don't really have the gold in the chamber, as they say. And this can cause false sense of trust. So definitely, this has a lot of wisdom that you can look at today as well. And the same applies to the one who is demanded and swears a false oath. It was narrated that Thabit bin ad said... The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Whoever swears deliberately and falsely that he belongs to a religion Milat, other than Islam is as he said, and whoever kills himself with something, Allah will punish him with it in the fire of hell. This is the Hadith of Sufyan according to the Hadith of Shuba. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Whoever swears falsely that he belongs to a religion, Milad, other than Islam, is as he's in. And whoever slaughters himself with something, he will slaughter with it on the day of resurrection. Okay, learning, learning. It was narrated that Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, said, We're present at the Battle of Hunayn with the Messenger of Allah. Okay, so Battle of Hunayn. Gonna make sure we always always like to rewrite the names, memorize it. And he said of a man who claimed to be a Muslim, This is one of the people of the fire. When the fighting began, that man fought fiercely. Then he was wounded, and it was said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, the man of whom you said that he is one of the people of the fire fought fiercely today, and he has died. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, To the fire. Some of the Muslims could hardly believe it. And while they were like that, it was said, He has not died, but he is badly wounded. That night, he could no longer bear the pain, so he killed himself. Interesting. So, like, some pain is so intense. It's very hard to endure. But think about this time period. I mean, you didn't have morphine. You know what I'm saying? So, woof. It was strong. Imagine giving birth back then must have been even more difficult. You don't have an epidural. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was informed of that and he said, Allah Akbar. 
I bear witness that I am Allah's slave and his messenger. Then he ordered Bilal to call out to the people, No one will enter paradise but a Muslim soul, and Allah will support this religion even by means of an evildoer. Wow. So, so even by an evildoer. Maybe because through the evil you see the good. And even though an evildoer plots, Allah is the best of planners and will make his religion reign regardless of what an evildoer plots. And some people can come to the religion by seeing the actions of an evildoer, right? And be like, hey, this is not good, right? Interesting. It was narrated from Sahal bin Saad al-Sayyidi that the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and the idolaters met in battle and fought. When the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, went back to his camp and the others went back to their camp, there was among the companions of the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, a man who killed any one of the enemy who got in his way. They said, No one has done better today than so and so. The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Rather, he is one of the people of hell. A man said, I am going to follow him. So he went out with him. Every time that man stopped, he stopped with him. And when he hastened, he hastened with him. He said, The man was badly wounded, so he sought to hasten his death. He put the handle of his sword on the ground and its tip in the middle of his chest. Then he leaned on his sword and killed himself. Oh, I read about that in Roman times as well. This was a very common method. Uh, uh, Cato, who was an opponent of Gaius Julius Caesar, did something very similar. This was very common uh, back then, th that you, you, you did that. The man went to the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, I bear witness that you are the messenger of Allah, peace be upon you. He said, Why is that? He said, Regarding the man who you said was one of the people of the fire. And the people were astounded by that. I said, I will find out about him for you. So I followed him until he was badly wounded in battle. Then he sought to hasten his death. He put the handle of his sword on the ground and its tip in the middle of his chest. Then he leaned on it and killed himself. The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, A man may do the deeds of the people of paradise, or so it seems to the people, although he is one of the people of the fire. And a man may do the deeds of the people of the fire, or so do it seems to the people, although he is one of the people of paradise. That's powerful. So things are not always as they appear. Somebody could be like, oh, this person is doing something of the fire, but they could actually be of the people of paradise. Oh, this person is doing something, they see so pious, they seem like they're doing everything in the actions of a person destined for paradise, whereas they're destined for hell. That's very powerful, right? So an overemphasis of heavy critiquing or assuming this is something people have to watch out for, apparently what you get from this. Man, what's interesting about this is that he broke the rules by taking his life. It, but you, you, you wonder, it's like, he had so much pain that he did that. Woo! You know, so we imagine, like, he had to go ahead and put people at himself out of his misery. But he could have begged patience. But it is quite difficult. It sounds easy when we're not the ones in pain. But it, that kind of shows me, as a reader, hey, you gotta have high tolerance for pain high tolerance for pain whoo you know it really shows you like whoo you gotta bear patience man wow it kind of really gets you going doesn't it gives me chills shaban said i heard al hassan say a man among those who came before you was afflicted with a boil when it hurt him too much he took an arrow from his quiver and pierced it and the bleeding did not stop until he died. Oh, that sucks, man. People really did suffer from boils and skin ailments back in the day. Oh, that's probably so painful, man. Your Lord, the mighty and sublime, said, I have forbidden paradise to him. Then he, Al-Hasan, stretched out his hand and pointed towards the masjid and said, By Allah, Jundab narrated this hadith to me from the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, in this masjid. What's interesting about this is that... uh. I want you okay, so some boils they have pus, but
but you sometimes it's good to, to sap it so that it can heal but if it has the heavy skin maybe that was like an attempt at vanity to remove it it depends on the healing process of that particular boil because you can look at it in many ways right uh, but this side of like oh wanting it to go away caused his own harm Boils were so difficult to deal with, especially when you get them on your backs. And they're so ugly and disgusting looking. Job suffered with skin conditions and had to endure it, right? It's why I don't judge people for their skin. I really try to have a lot of mercy for people who are going through skin conditions. There's so many now. And, you know, people hide their skin conditions with makeup and stuff. But at the end of the day, I really try not to judge people for any skin problem they have. Just like how... Someone has leprosy or something like that. You know, you had to show kindness. Really empathy. Because people suffer. Look at this guy, you know. He's He had a boil. He was in pain. And he tried to take it. And it was a skin ailment. or something uncomfortable. And he ended up doing something. And he died. You know, and not only did he die. But he didn't get to go to paradise apparently. So we must not drive people to do things that make them harm their skin and to help them heal it and to help them bear patience and do what we can. You can learn a lot of lessons from this particular hadith. What do you think, fam?